absolute head scratcher. Do you know anything about the history of the house? Not very much. It's a mid-century house. It was built in 1961, and we have had other experiences. This little door in our basement, this root cellar that we don't use, it's about four feet tall. And periodically, this door will allow. We hide to the three girls in the house in each room. So, Adriana, you have a story that goes back to when you were about 12 years old? Tell yes, us exactly. Tell us what happened. Yes. Yes, so the thing, uh, we live in. Oh, they come and go. And then, and that's supposedly who was supposed to be haunting the cemetery. And then, fast forward a couple years ago, my sister and I decided to go there one point, not as. Now, I told my sister, I'm like, hold on a minute, let me listen real quick. I've been looking in your face, you were serious. So we just got out of there, and then, and then uh, I guess about two weeks later, we, we decided to go back. We was walking down through there, and, and, uh, and, uh, and we got past where the house and the cellar is. All right, folks, we're back out again. It's been a long time. Apologize for that, but uh, I guess with the living out in the country and stuff, it's uh, kind of taken its toll on the amount of times that we go out for adventures because walking out your door every day is an adventure. So, I mean, uh, we're a little behind the times now, but we decided we would come out and do something completely different. So we are out here on a wild camping glamping adventure so we've come out here today in our tent trailer that our grandpa given us um a while back and we chose to fix it up and make it a lot nicer it's still up in the air if we're gonna keep it as a camping kind of trailer or if we're gonna change it into an ice fishing shack but we just wanted to test it out today and see how it worked for 
uh, a camping style. A glamping adventure like this is something new to us. We don't really necessarily do this and we don't do it often when we do. But uh, it's good to get out and have a little bit of a different change of pace. Although we are glamping, we are wild glamping. I don't know how else to call it as we are not in a public campground or anything like that. We are out again on private land and uh, the difference is instead of making shelters or you know any of that kind of stuff bringing tarps or tents or anything we've elected to bring out the tent trailer and uh, so far no complaints at all it's done very well um, it was relatively easy to set up so we were happy about that. The ground's a little unlevel here, so it did present a few challenges in terms of that. But we were able to get it set up pretty quickly and, you know, threw a uh, tarp out. We still utilized a lot of our different bushcraft tendencies that we use for multiple camps. By that, I mean that we, you know, erected a tarp and awning area. Uh, we've fashioned a tripod and bale sticks and whatnot to hang pots over the fire and uh, you've seen we smoked a fish up there today things that we do almost exclusively every time we go out it's hard to break old habits whether you're you know glamping it or having a more roughing it style camp so this kind of camp glamping style has gave us the opportunity to bring more tools and items that we would generally not bring on a more wild style of camping like when we bring minimal items and other things like that some of those items are the bio -like camp stove which is right here um the reason we wouldn't want to bring that on a different kind of camp is its weight and um size it is a very heavy tool or item that is really not very useful for the use you get out of it it's so heavy to bring out to camp and it takes up way too much space another thing we have chose to bring is the BioLite house 620 I think I said that right I don't really know but it's a very useful item in a lot of different camps but the same with the camp stove it takes up so much space but it gives you lights, a radio, but it's all solar energy, which is a very good thing to have because it can just be charged from the outside. But it's not practical in most camps, although many people underestimate the use and requirement of lights um, when you're on a camp out in the bush. Lights are probably one of the most underestimated items in camping or bushcraft more like the trailers just uh, uh, upgraded shelter so to say you get a bed a hard floor so you can change you can do everything you need to do without being on the ground or trying to sand in your boot it's it's a different style for us so we have not done in a long time we also have a new addition here this is Hawk look at the camera over here look at okay well, Huck isn't there. the smartest dog but he's the newest addition to our family and uh, so he's a blue tech hound and uh, he's joining us out on this adventure too along with Izzy you can see her over there She's laying down there on the other side of Huck there. But, uh, yeah. So Huck's the new puppy. You guys haven't seen him before. But uh, he's joining in on this adventure. And that'll be the first look you have at him. So there are some things I like to take out regardless of the form of camping I'm doing, whether it's more of a bushcraft style camp or 
you know, a hardcore wild camp or more of a glamping wild camp. I love the Go Flow gravity bag there with the Sawyer Mini water filter. I love taking that sucker out. I can get water out of virtually anywhere and it ends up good, clean, drinkable water. When you're looking at something like a, a tent trailer like this, the water reservoir on this particular type of unit is not very big. So having the ability when you're wild camping with it, having the ability to go out and basically procure water from any source that you find is a huge plus. We had also talked about, uh, you know, creating the fire pit and a tripod, whatnot, bale sticks and stuff to go with it. This is something that we do on almost every camp. It just uh, doesn't really matter the style of camp you cook no matter where you go. Having a fire is a responsibility and it needs to be done safely, so you got to construct yourself a fire pit. And uh, yeah, so there are a few things that, that happen that, you know, you will have seen in a lot of our other videos. Here is one of the BioLite 620 solar home lights like Caleb talked about. So we just put up one outside light for this adventure. And then going inside the trailer. So you can see here, that's the BioLite 620 solar home. So I mean that we have that light there and we threw another one up, up top there tried to run the cords as inconspicuous as possible but you know what they're there uh, so you can see just having a quick look around your water reservoir is down here and it is not very big you got less than five gallons there so I mean you can use that up in a heartbeat uh, you got a furnace won't be using that there's no point this time of year a fridge that is super handy and obviously something that we've never had on a camp before and the stove that can go either indoors or outdoors uh, we elected to cook on the fire just because we like to cook on the fire so that's what we did this time you got your table that drops down into another bed and then of course another bed over on the other side so I mean it's it's actually very roomy it's something we are certainly not used to with our camping style but hey you know it's a beautiful nice little unit and uh, and we're happy to have it so thanks to my dad for for giving this to us and we fixed it up and stuff and we're we're ready to do some camping as Caleb mentioned one of the small things that you don't know unless you camp like we camp is the hard floor now I know what you're thinking what is the big deal with having a hard floor when it comes to nighttime or morning or whatever when you're changing out of your clothes and and trying to get yourself cleaned up whatever you're not sitting there balancing on the side of your boot trying to keep your socks or your feet from getting dirty before you jump into your your sleeping equipment it's something that's very small or minuscule or, or whatever that that is greatly overlooked but that's a big thing that we noticed right away when we got it just because we're used to doing the more roughing it kind of styled camps but yeah so that's it that's uh day one here we might film a little bit more later but we're not a hundred percent positive it's uh we we spent a good portion of the day really all you guys seen was us us setting up everything and it wasn't really us it was more caleb that was was setting everything up all the tent trailer and everything and and uh you know he got a a solar fire going again he mentioned that's something that we we don't play with often so it's nice to do something different and uh yeah that's the bulk of the the filming was was getting here setting up uh, lighting a fire, cooking stuff, and that was basically it. We took like the entire afternoon off because it's been so long since we've been out that uh, we honestly just decided to take that time for us and we didn't do much filming or anything of the sort, so I apologize for that, but 
that's the way it goes sometimes if you're not enjoying yourself there ain't no point in doing it so anyways we'll let you guys go for now and we'll talk to you later